guys, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky's Face, and today I'm bringing to you the very rare book haul. <laughs> I don't usually do book hauls on this channel because I actually find it kind of draining to research what a book is about when I don't even know if I, I'm gonna end up enjoying it as soon as I start reading it. So I usually just start reading books. And if I'm intrigued, then I might read more about it. So I don't do book hauls very often because I, I don't really research the books that I look for that much. Um, but I do it for my job and that's enough book haulage for me normally. However, when people send me books or occasionally when there's a sale or something, I will pick up some books. So yeah, recently both things have happened. So I'm gonna jump into the book haul now. So why don't we start off with some of the books. I actually mentioned this in a vlog not too long ago, um, but Kurt, one of my subscribers, sent me a whole bunch of books. Like, so many books. So first of all, we have The Chronicles of Narnia. This is a beautiful edition. I actually had this edition when I was a kid, and I've been rereading them. Emma's book club just read um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and I actually missed the Zoom meeting, but I've been enjoying rereading that, the original. I just love Tumnus. <laughs> The vibe is great of that whole book, uh, and I still want to try Turkish Delight. I, I still have not tried that. So I'm really looking forward to getting into more of these. I mean, all of them just have so much imagination. The Horse and His Boy was my favorite growing up because, yeah, I, I think it's maybe tied with The Magician's Nephew because <laughs> The Magician's Nephew is so funny, and I just love the sense of wonder when you meet the white. So, um... Maybe I should describe what these are about, huh? So, <laughs> The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is the most famous of the Chronicles of Narnia because people really see a lot of Christian influence in it. Um, there's, there's these children who are uh, being sheltered in the country from the bombs happening in London during, I think, one of the Blitzes. And so they're sheltering at this professor's house. And this professor is someone you meet in The Magician's Nephew, which is like a prequel of sorts. Um, they end up at this professor's house and walk into a magic wardrobe where they find a whole nother world where an evil witch is ruling and it's never Christmas. It's always winter, but never Christmas. And then they find out that Aslan is this lion and there's like hope for change coming because of Aslan. The lion is like the hope of everybody in this magical land which is called Narnia and he's kind of like a Christ figure which maybe suggests what's gonna happen to the lion later in the story so definitely I would recommend the series especially if you have kids I think it's great as an adult still it's still like super charming but you might find that lacking nostalgia it will not be like the most magical experience of your life <laughs> at least that's that's the gist that I've gotten from other people but um, especially if you're a Christian, you probably already know about this. And if you have children, if, even if you're not a Christian, if you have children, I think this series growing up was just a favorite for a lot of kids that I knew and for me as well. So The Magician's Nephew is about, um, let's see, I, I'm trying to remember how it begins exactly. I know there's a boy who's been sent to his uncle's house and he's very unhappy about this. I think his mom is dying, so he's spending a lot of time at his uncle's house. And he meets a girl named Polly, his name is Diggory. And they end up, <laughs> they they steal this like, they, they touch, no they don't steal, they touch these magic rings that Diggory's uncle has. Diggory's uncle is a magician and they touch these rings. He kind of forces it on them and Polly ends up disappearing and ends up in the wood between the worlds, which is a series of like pools basically where um, every pool, sorry about the noise. My discord's open. I should probably turn it off. Thank God. Uh, I was studying before this, but I was just really not feeling my best. So I just um, decided to do this instead because this is a little bit more like hypey, you know, whereas setting is a little more like low key. Um, so anyways, um, yeah. And Diggory ends up going after uh, his friend Polly and they end up going also to Narnia, which is a world that's still in creation. So you get to witness the creation of Narnia in that one, and you also witness how evil entered the world of Narnia through a line of witches. And I think that's probably my favorite part, is when they go to a world 
they accidentally sort of end up in a world where there is a a witch and she follows them into London and wreaks all kinds of havoc and follows them into Narnia. So it's it's a really like backstory heavy book, but the backstory is so fun. It feels like front story. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's The Magician's Nephew tied with my favorite for The Horse and His Boy. And I just have a feeling that The Horse and His Boy is more of a nostalgia pick for me. And I know Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf can agree with me on this. It is it is like so fun. It's so nostalgic for me. I think I like things set in the desert and um, that's why I loved it. But I won't really describe that one to you because it's been accused of like <laughs> racism and stuff. So I'm just not gonna go there. Um, but regardless, this is a wonderful collection. It's definitely, it's all set in fantasy universe. So the racism is like kind of one step removed um, from any anything direct. So I, I think it would probably go right over children's heads, but you could talk with them about it. It's definitely, it's something you could talk through with children easily. And like I said, it was my favorite, The Horse's Boy. So yeah, I would recommend this trilogy very highly. And thank you, thank you so much to Kurt for giving me this. I'm really looking forward to making my way through those. And Kurt also sent me The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, <laughs> all four of them. And I'm so excited because I really love these pocket paperbacks. I had the pocket paperbacks on my Amazon wish list, and that's, I think, why Kurt picked them up for me from a used bookstore. I have a I have a really giant physical copy of the, uh, the trilogy, but not The Hobbit. I don't think I had it. I might have had one of The Hobbits somewhere, but I think it's all, yeah, I do. It's, it's a big one though. It's, they're both like really heavy and I have trouble with heavy books sometimes when I'm trying to relax. I need something lighter and um, like physically lighter. <laughs> and so I was really wanting some pocket, pocket paperbacks and he sent me these. So I'm so grateful. Tiffany's Patreon is going to be reading this in, I think January, February, March. So I just finished I think I just finished The Fellowship of the Ring really recently, but I'm probably just gonna go ahead and reread it. <laughs> uh, I'm very slow, I'm very slow, but I'm looking forward to this so much. So those are awesome. Kurt also sent me The Rape of Nanking. So this is about how the Japanese, let's see, they swept into the ancient city of Nanking in China. And uh, it's, <sighs> Yeah, as is suggested by the title of this book, the Japanese do some really terrible things to the Chinese. When is this set? In 1937. So I, I really do want to learn about Japanese and Chinese. I want to learn about Asian history. There is so much in Asian history that I am, I'm not even vaguely aware of. So much has happened. China is such an old empire and I'm just fascinated by those cultures and I kind of always have been. I don't know why I haven't ever like really researched them more, but I think I'm just like, I am making time for it now because that is where my interest lies. So yeah, I'm super excited to get to this. Thank you so much, um, Kurt. And recently I got another book. Uh, this is from Peg at the History Shelf, who I'm very excited to say is going to be co-hosting, hopefully, a readathon with me soon. We're still trying to put it together, but it's in November, so <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna work. We haven't put it together yet. But regardless, super excited to be co-hosting with her, and also, she's gonna be joining me on live soon with Chelsea from Voyage of a Time Wanderer. So excited for that one. That's gonna be a live stream about, um, running a genre specific YouTube channel because both of them are into history and Chelsea likes historical fiction and Peg is really into like military history and stuff so yeah I want and obviously I'm known for like Russian literature stuff so I just want to talk about running a genre specific channel with them and I just can't I cannot wait it's gonna be so fun that's gonna be coming up soon hopefully in October so Peg saw this on my wish list and sent it to me thank you so much Peg I'm just so grateful this is one of my favorite Brandon Sanderson's and I think it's not generally a favorite. That's really common for me to be like, this other one is my favorite, even though everybody else loves this one the most. I mean, that's really common with me. So I don't ever really trust, you know, oh, this is the most popular one. So this is where you should start. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but I, I also am really bad at researching things. So sometimes if I just get a hint of, oh, like this one, zombies with a hot priest. 
that's for me. That is for me. So yeah, this is a zombie story. They're not called zombies, but there's a kind of, I don't even remember every very much what else happening in it, but I just remember just being obsessed with it. Um, so we're following a prince and, and a princess and in one of their cities, I feel like it might be the princess's city. <laughs> There is a city where they put all the really sick people and basically the sickness is if you get an injury on your body, it goes on hurting as much as it did at the second you got the injury and it never heals and you're just always in pain with that, which is like a terrifying, <laughs> terrifying thought. Um, so there's a city where they keep all these people so that nobody else catches it from them. It's like kind of a mystery. What is causing this ailment? And so the prince arrives at the princess's like normal city apart from this outcast city. And then he gets, he, he catches the disease, I believe. I'm trying to remember. Um, and so he ends up getting sent to the city and you kind of wander around the city with him for a while while he's researching things and why this is happening and maybe how to prevent it and stuff like that. And there's a priest, I don't even remember how exactly the priest comes in, but I know that he's trying to preach to the princess's city and save everybody before his own home country decides to come in and destroy them because of a religious difference. So the philosophical religious element is always fascinating to me. And I love the strong mystery plot. I know that this is not a favorite for everybody, but I, I thought it was fabulous. So I cannot wait to reread this. Uh, and it's a big floppy paperback, which is just my favorite kind. So this is the anniversary Def author's definitive edition, which I've never read. So yay, cannot wait to get to that. Okay, what else have I gotten? Okay, so I recent, I mentioned some of these books in my recent blog, in a recent vlog where I talked about Kurt's book haul, but I realized I forgot some of them. <laughs> so here we go. Okay, I just realized I was, I, not only had I tried to start recording on my microphone, but I, failed to switch it to the input device in Audacity. So I think now we should be hearing the microphone audio. Okay, so what? where were we? Okay, so our first audiobook part of the haul is Natasha's... Like the cup. Let's get me. Natasha's Dance um, by Orlando Fijes, Fijes, Fijes. I have no idea how you pronounce that um, because I don't know where he's from. Orlando sounds like maybe Spanish, but I don't know. I've heard other people not pronounce it Fies, so I have no idea. Regardless, this is a cultural history of Russia, and this has been on my radar for a long time. I feel like possibly Peg actually also recommended this to me like a long time ago. I think I asked her because she was really into Russian history. And I'm pretty sure I asked her, where should I start? And she recommended this. So I finally have bought it. <laughs> I finally own it. So that's exciting. I'm hoping I can maybe get to this probably next year is what I'm thinking. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and I feel like Tony also recently recommended this to me. So yeah, excited to check that out. What else do we have here? We have Someone at a Distance by Dorothy this Whipple. Is Sorry, I have to start them so that you can see the pictures. Uh, this is the only Dorothy Whipple audiobook that I have ever been able to find. And um, Alana has been really talking her up and I really wanted to read her. I need to get the ebook of The Priory so that I can read that one because she really, really loves The Priory. So, and I'm very intrigued by that one. So I need to get the ebook of that one, but I just have to buy it and I just haven't yet because I almost never buy books. So, um, but I saw that this was really cheap on Audible and I thought I should get this and then maybe I can get the physical edition for my library. That would be cool. So I'm excited to finally get to my first Dorothy Whipple. I don't know when exactly I'll be doing that, but I have it finally. So, and I don't even know what it's about. No idea. <laughs> Okay, next we have A River in Dark. Is it in the dark or just dark? A River in Darkness. Boy, I just 
This? I just butchered that. Um, A River in Darkness, One Man's Escape from North Korea by Masaji... Okay, I'm not trusting my own thing here. Masaji Ishikawa. So, Masaji Ishikawa is his... I think his mother was Japanese and his father was Korean. Um, And his father went from one of the Koreas, I don't know where, which one, to Japan. And that's where Masaji was born. And then I think when he was like 11, his family moved back to North Korea in 1960, because at the time it was being called the economic miracle. It was being called the promised land. It was being said that everybody was provided for, and it was a communist paradise. And it was like the member of the communist bloc that was like really brag brag worthy and so they went there found themselves in hell on earth (laughs) and masaji did not escape until 1996 so i think this is his story of life in north korea and his escape so i'm very interested to read this and i also bought the ebook of this because I think I ended up, there was a really good sale on the ebook, and then it was only a couple dollars more for the audiobook. In addition, if you bought them both. So I was like, okay, I'm buying them both. Great. So I'm really excited, and we know, as we know, I always get to my North Korean memoirs. <laughs> That's like the, I don't know why, but I'm just obsessed with them. So um, next, apparently, I actually bought, I don't know if this was on purpose or on accident, but apparently I bought the Audible edition of Far From the Maddening Crowd, Madding Crowd, the Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy, which I'm excited for a secret TBR video to be doing this. So I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I own it. That'll be make it that'll make it really easy to do my secret trivia video. So, um that that's all the audiobooks. What is next? Ebooks. So I acquired, I didn't buy The Pillars of the House by Charlotte Marie Young and Charlotte Marie Young? Mary Young? I don't know. Um this is a Victorian classic. And I'm reading it because, of course, of Kate Howe. And she's having a buddy read going on in amongst her patrons, but it's not, I think, only patrons. I feel like other people can join. But anyways, um, yeah, and I'm 32% into this. I acquired it for Victober. I'm reading it for Victober. I'm really enjoying it so much. So it's following... Oh, I didn't really... Yeah. That's because I didn't know. I was going to say, I didn't really describe all the other books very thoroughly, but that's because I don't really know what they're about. So this one I know what it's about because I'm 31% into volume one. So it's following a very large family. I think there's 13 children and their main source of sustenance, their provider, can no longer care for them. And so it's kind of following them as they grow, where they are like where they get sent to. And I think that's why it's such a gigantic book. It is a giant book because we're following 13 children. So yeah, Uh, there was recently, as I was reading it on Friends with Jenny, there was a conversion scene and it was just the most gorgeous thing. (laughs) Like, just like a normal person who was like really hesitant to witness being asked questions about his faith. And so he just answered them. Okay, this this is my faith. This is what I believe and why I believe it. And yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful scene. So loving that. Um, I also acquired the aquariums of Pyongyang, 10 years in the North Korean Gulag. Oh yeah, it's a prison memoir. All right. I actually read another North Korean prison memoir. I think I was 19, just like just out of high school. There was a couple books that I read right out of high school that were like really popular at the time i just saw oh there's a bunch of holds on this i should read it and it was escape from camp 14 i think it was um fascinating fascinating somebody said oh oh the author of the rape of nanking calls this destined to be a classic whoa so i don't even know what the aquariums is referring to I have no idea. Regardless, the terrifying memoir of life in North Korea that our nation's leaders want you to read. Okay. I cannot wait to get to this. I'm fascinated. Okay. 
that there's that and then i also have one more <laughs> that i could not resist buying it is travels with charlie by john steinbeck which i read recently for my book club and i'm so grateful i did um kate from the literary apothecary helped she's the one who chose this as our choice because we were co-hosting this and boy i am so glad we ended up reading this definitely one of my favorites of the year so this is following john steinbeck on his journey across america with his dog charlie and he talks about some of the the people that he encounters the things that he loves about america the things that bother him about america he has some really beautiful reflections i did not find it preachy i didn't even know what he was really getting to until the end of the book yeah and i listened to like half of it on audio and it was yeah it was just such a great experience I, I made a review of it. We'll see if I can get my review out. But I had to buy it because I saw it was only like $1.99 on Kindle because it's a pretty short book. But yeah, I was like, I need it. I need it. So I just went ahead and bought it. Love it. So that that is the end of the book haul. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Let me know what books you've recently acquired that you're excited to talk about. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.